So welcome uh, to this uh, third day of IPCO. Uh, good morning and good evening. Uh, and uh, well, the session uh, will be about extended formulations. That's a common feature of, of the three talks. And the first talk uh, is uh, by uh, uh, Yusuke uh, Kobayashi. Uh, and the title is Weighted Triangle Free Two Matching Problem with A Disjoint Forbidden Triangles. So go ahead, Yusuke. And I mute everybody uh, if I can, yes. Okay, thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for coming to the morning session, although it is an evening session for me. Okay, so I will be talking about Weighted Triangle Free Two Matching Problem with some additional constraints. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I was also muted automatically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here is an outline of my talk. So after the introduction, I will talk about polyhedral approach, which is used for many combinatorial optimization problems. Then uh, I will talk about an extended formulation, which is used for our problem. And uh, finally, I will give an algorithm based on this extended formulation. So let me begin with the introduction. So our problem setting is a generalization of the matching problem. So we begin with a classical matching problem. So suppose G is an undirected graph, then an edge set F is called a matching if the number of edges in F incident to B is at most one for every vertex B. So here is an example of a matching. And the classical maximum matching problem is to find the matching of maximum size in a given graph. It is well known that the, this problem can be solved in polynomial time. Similarly, we can consider two matchings and two factors. And edge set F is called a two matching if the number of edges in F instant of D is at most two for every vertex B. And if we replace this inequality with equality, it is called a two-factor. In other words, a two-matching is a vertex disjoint correction of paths and cycles, like this. And a two-factor is a vertex disjoint collection of cycles covering all the vertices. And in the two-matching problem or two-factor problem, we are given a graph and possibly a weight function on the edge set. And the objective is to find a um, two matching of maximum size in the unweighted problem. And in the weighted problem, we want to find a two matching of maximum total weight, or we want to find a two factor of minimum or maximum total weight. And it is well known that all of these problems can be solved in polynomial time. And I have already mentioned that a two factor is a vertex joint of collection of cycles covering all the vertices. So we can use many cycles. On the other hand, if we want to cover all the vertices by using only one cycle, then it is a Hamiltonian cycle. So of course, finding an Hamiltonian cycle is a hard problem. So there is a huge gap between these two problems. So we are interested in the problem between these two problems. So my question is what happens if we uh, consider an additional constraint that an edge set has no short cycle. So we say that an edge set F is called CK free if it has no cycle of length at most K. And the CK free to matching problem is the following problem. We are given a graph G and possibly a weight function W on the edge set. And the objective is to find a CK free to matching of maximum size in the unweighted problem. And in the weighted problem, we want to find uh, CK free to matching of maximum total weight, or we want to find a CK free to factor of minimum or maximum total weight. We can easily see that these two weighted versions are polynomially equivalent, so by adding the weight edges or something. And there are many previous studies on CK-free-to-matching problems. So 
So if k is at most two, then the condition C to free means nothing. It just means uh, to matching has no parallel edges and uh, no cell groups. So this problem can be solved in polynomial time. Oh, maximum size means the unweighted version and the maximum weight means weighted version. And if k is sufficiently large, so for example, k is at least uh, half of the number of vertices of the input graph, then the problem is NP hard. Because by solving the CK free to matching problem, we can determine the existence of a Hamiltonian cycle in the given graph. And uh, actually, if NK is at least five, the problem, problem is NP hard. So for unweighted, both unweighted version and the weighted version. And if then k is equal to four, weighted version is going to be hard, but the uh, unweighted version is still open. And if then k is equal to three, so I mean, a two matching cannot contain a triangle, then the problem can be solved in polynomial time. Also. Unweighted problem can be solved in polynomial time. However, the weighted version is still open. And there are several studies on these cases, these problems, by restricting some graph classes. So for example, then we consider this problem, C3 free to matching, maximum weight C3 free to matching problem. Uh, it can be solved in polynomial time if the input graph has maximum degree at both three. Okay. And, uh, in this talk, we focus on this part, weighted C3 free to matching problem. And our main result is to show that weighted C3 free to matching problem can be solved in polynomial time under the assumption that all C3s are edge chain. So C3 means triangles. All triangles are edge chain. Okay. And actually, we gave a polynomial time algorithm for a slightly generalized problem. So which we call the T free B factor problem. So in this problem, we are given a graph and the weight function W, and we are also given a B of B for each vertex B, and we are also given a set T of edge disjoint triangles. In this problem, the objective is to find the T free B factor of minimum or a maximum total weight. So here, an edge set F is called T free, if it has no triangle contained in P. So in this sense, so given set T is a forbidden edge joint triangles, forbidden triangles. And then edge set F is called the B factor. If the number of edges is sent to B in F is equal to B of B. So it is a specified number. Okay. And we can easily see that if T it's a set of all C3s in a given graph, then the condition T3 is equivalent to the condition C3 free. So in this sense, this problem is a generalization of the weighted C3 free two-factor problem. So as a corollary of this result, we can obtain a polynomial time algorithm for the weighted C3 free two-factor to matching problem. But we need an assumption that all C3s are edge disjoint. Oh, in fact, for us, I will give an outline of the proof of this research. Okay, so let me talk about polyhedral approach. So polyhedral approach is used for many combinatorial optimization problems. So in particular, it is used for many matching problems and its generalizations. Okay, so the starting point is a matching problem. So it is well known that the weighted matching problem can be solved in polynomial time. So here is a problem. The objective is to find a perfect matching of minimum or maximum total weight. But why is this problem solvable in polynomial time? Maybe one of the key points is that uh, we know the description of the perfect matching polytope. Here, the perfect matching polytope is a, a convex combination of characteristic vectors of all perfect matchings. So here is an example. Okay, if we are given a graph like this, then it has three perfect matchings. 
and each perfect matching can be represented by the one vectors, characteristic vectors. And we can consider a convex combination of these three vectors. So it is called a perfect matching polyton. And uh, important result on the matching problems is the description of the matching polytope. So it is known that the perfect matching polytope is described by this system of inequalities. The first inequality says that uh, the summation of x over all the edges in center B is equal to one for every vertex B. And this inequality says that for every vertex set Z, of odd cardinality, the summation of x of e over all edges in delta z is at least one, and x is not negative. Okay, it is well known. And a perfect matching polytope is represented by this system of inequality. And also, uh, we can also in order to solve the weighted matching problem, it suffices to maximize or minimize the linear function over this product. Okay. So also this has exponentially many inequalities here. Uh, we can maximize or minimize the linear function by using the ellipsoid method because the separation problem for this can be solved in polynomial time. So without ellipsoid method, we can solve the problem by using combinatorial algorithms. But uh, in many combinatorial algorithms, we also use this relationship or so it's variant. Okay, so as a generalization of this relationship, the representation of B factor polytop is also known. Okay, recall that an edge that F is B factor if if satisfy this condition. And uh, the B vector part of is represented by this system of inequalities. Okay, the first one is the summation of X over all the edges in instant B is equal to B of B. So this looks complicated, but uh, this is a condition for each vertex set and uh, edge partition of data of C. So X0 and F1 is a partition of the edge set of edge set delta of Z. Okay. And uh, we have this inequality for every Z and uh, every F0, F1 with some condition. And X is between zero and one. Okay, so anyway, we know the representation of the B factor product. And recall that our problem is a T3 B factor problem. So T3 means that uh, it has no triangle contained in the given set. Okay, so maybe a natural approach is to obtain a representation of the T3 B factor polytop. And the natural candidate is to add this constraint to the T3 B factor polytop. So these three inequalities are used for representing a B factor polytope. But in addition, we consider this inequality. So this means that for every triangle T, uh, we can use at most two edges in it. So of course, each characteristic vector of T3 B factor satisfy this condition. So this inclusion holds. So it might be a candidate for the T3 B factor polytop. But how about the opposite direction? And um, unfortunately, the opposite direction doesn't hold. So this is a bad example. So suppose B of B is equal to two and the T is a set of all triangles in this graph. And we can check that this graph has only two B factors. So this one and this one and both of them contain triangles. So this graph has no T3 B factors. So in other words, T3 B factor polytope is an empty set. On the other hand, if we consider the convex combination of 
two characteristic vector of this A set, we obtain a vector like this. So x of e is equal to one half for these black edges and uh, it is one for these blue edges. And uh, since this is a convex combination of two characteristic vector B factors, it satisfies almost all inequalities except the condition for triangles. And we can also check that this vector satisfies the final equality, inequality here. So this vector is in P. So P is the set of inequalities here. So the left hand side is the empty set, but there is a vector in P. So the opposite direction does not hold. Okay, so in this sense, it might be difficult to obtain a description of the T3 B factor polyton. So instead, our approach is to find an extended formulation of this polyton. The extended formulation, in the extended formulation, we want to represent a polytope as a projection of another polytope in a higher dim dimensional space, like this. And there are many studies on extended formulations, but uh, most studies focus on the number of inequalities. And we want an extended formulation of the T3 B factor polytope. And we note that we don't care about the number of inequalities. So actually we, in fact, for us, I will give an extended formulation of the T3 B factor polytope, but it has exponentially many inequalities. So this is the biggest difference between our work and the previous results on extended formulations. Okay, uh, in order to obtain an extended formulation, let me introduce new variables y. So y is indexed by a triangle T and its edge subset F. So roughly speaking, Y represents a edge set contained in a T3 B factor. Okay. Suppose M is a T3 B factor, then we want to assign one to YTF if the intersection of M and T is equal to F. And we assign zero as of well. Since T3 B factor contains no triangle, we don't need this variable. For each triangle, we just introduce these seven new variables. And we can easily see that Y satisfies these conditions. So more precisely, if M is a T3 B factor, then its characteristic vector X and Y so why it's defined by this equality, satisfies the following all of these constraints. So it looks complicated, but these four constraints are the same as before. And these all only contain X. So these are easy. And these three conditions are new. These are conditions for Y. And the first con condition says that the summation of YTF is equal to one for each triangle T. And the second condition says that the summation of YTF over all the edge set containing E is equal to X of E. And the third condition is Y is not negative. And we can easily see that if we define X one Y like this, then X and Y satisfy all of these conditions. Okay. And uh, the, in the next step, we want to st uh, modify this constraint. We want to strengthen this constraint. So we have already seen that X satisfies this condition. Okay, I have not explained details, but uh, this condition is obtained by uh, considering the parity of the number of edges in delta of z. So if we have a triangle intersecting delta of z, then we can obtain more information on the number of edges here. So I have no time for explaining details, but uh, 
if we have a triangle intersecting delta of C, uh, we can see that we can decrease the left-hand side of this inequality slightly. So this value. So this value depends on Y like this. So it depends on the choice of F0 and F1. But uh, in any case, we can strengthen this inequality. And if we have several triangles here, then we can uh, decrease the left-hand side for each triangle. Okay, so anyway, so we can strengthen this inequality by using the value of y. Okay. Then uh, we can see that x and y satisfy all of these conditions. So as an easy consequence, the T3 B factor polytope is contained in the projection of this polytope. So this is because if we take a characteristic vector of T3 B factor X, then there exists a vector Y satisfying all of these constraints. Okay, so this direction is easy. And uh, actually, our main theorem is to show that this must be equal. So this gives an extended formulation of the T3 B factor polytope. You have five more minutes. Okay, thanks. Including questions? Okay. Last questions. Okay. okay, so based on this exit formulation, I will talk about, I will give an algorithm. So we know that the T3B factor is represented as a projection of this polytope. Uh, so it suffices to maximize or minimize our linear function over this polytope to solve the weighted T3B factor problem. However, we have exponentially many inequalities here. So we use the ellipsoid method and we solve the separation problem for this constraint. So how to solve the separation so how we can solve the separation problem for this one? Our idea is to reduce the case without Q of T like this. So actually this is a separation problem for the standard B factor polytope. And uh, it is known that the separation problem can be solved in polynomial time by using Padberg and Lau's theorem. So which shows that uh, we can minimize the left-hand side in polynomial time. Okay, so reduction is not so difficult. For each triangle, we just replace it with a single vertex with three additional edges. And we define the X value of each edge appropriately here. Then, so I have no time for the proof, but we can show that minimum of the original value in the original graph is equal to the minimum of the, this value in the obtained graph. And we can minimize this value by using the padberg lau theorem, so we can minimize this value in the original graph. So we can compute the minimum value of the left-hand side. So it suffices to check this, check whether this minimum value is at, at least one or not. So the separation problem can be solved in polynomial time, and we can minimize or maximize a linear function by using the ellipsoid method. Okay, so let me conclude my talk. So our main result is to show that T3B factor problem can be solved in polynomial time. And the key ingredient is, that is an extended formulation of the T3B factor polytope with exponentially many inequalities. And uh, using an extended formulation with exponentially many inequalities might be an interesting new technique for optimization problems. So my natural question is uh, whether we can apply this approach to other problems. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, very much, Isuke, uh, for this uh, very nice example of uh, using extended formulations. As you said, um, research focuses on the number of inequalities, and you use it in a new way by using the ellipsoid method and uh, 
not being scared of many uh, inequalities. Um, and uh, okay, so are there any questions uh, to you, Suke? Uh, Laura has a question, so unmute yourself, please, uh, Laura. Okay, hi. Uh, thank you, Yusuke. Very nice talk. I was uh, wondering what happens for bigger values of K? Like, can you extend these uh, formulations? Is the separation that is going to crash? Uh, what happens if K is equal to 4, for example? Okay, is equal to 4? Okay. What do you mean, this case? Y yes, but uh, the NPRness uh, still works if uh, the cycles are disjoint? Uh, it is NP hard even for the disjoint case. Oh, I see. So, okay, good. That so, is good. so this doesn't work. Yeah, thank uh, but, you. But, uh, but uh, I'm wondering whether our approach works for some special case like this one. The graph is by button, it's a weighted. Yeah, some special cases can be solved in polynomial time. So I'm wondering whether so this special case can be extended to some more generalized case, but not a general case. Okay, thank you. Uh, Matthias Walter has a question. Yes, also thanks for the nice talk. Um, so since you, if I got it right, you can solve the separation problem for your new inequalities by uh, uh, going to some, modifying your graph appropriately and then solving the separation problem for the regular uh, two matching inequalities there, is that right? Okay. What do you mean? Okay, here. Yes, this one. Yes. Yeah. Because then, then I wonder whether it is possible, I mean, it's, it's a bit quick now, whether it's possible to just do this uh, construction right away and then relate the, um, the two matching or two factor polytope for G prime to that of G with uh, forbidden cycles. Uh, Have you looked at that? Sorry, so, so I couldn't understand your question. So by, by using this reduction technique, you want to so find so, the relationship between the original polytope and the polytope in G prime. So, so what? Yes. So what I wonder is whether the two-factor polytope for G prime is yeah. related to the two-factor cycle-free, uh, T-cycle-free polytope for G. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's not, we don't have a correspondence between them. So because, so if we choose, if we don't use we, we use no edges in T, then such a two factor does not correspond to a two factor in G prime. I see, I see. So actually two factor in G prime and two, two, factor in, two factor in G and two factor G prime have no one-to-one -one correspondence. But uh, we just have a correspondence between the minimum value of this one. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Yusuke. I will uh, just read uh, more questions. Uh, Giacomo uh, wants to ask a question, but he's the boss, so he will be last. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sam uh, Fiorini asks, what breaks down when triangles meet? Uh, Tony Hume uh, asks, uh, do you know what happens if you apply a standard hierarchy like Shirley Adams to the initial LP? And uh, well, I think these questions are for the break because time uh, is over. Uh, and actually, uh, it would also be interesting to know the feasibility case of triangle free uh, two matchings, which is solved in Hartwig's and thesis, but it didn't appear. So I would also like to know whether you have something to say about that, uh, something new to say about that.